Okay, so for today's class, we'll be learning about shadow work. Shadow work is a very broad topic, so there'll be more than one. There'll be more than one class. It's just the first. And shadow work can be very emotional, and it takes a lot of strength to overcome your shadows. But once you, but once you overcome your shadows, you will realize that uh, your whole perspective changes, and you'll realize that your journey gets is very is much easier okay. here's the here is presentation i made on shadow work and also along with the presentation we'll be doing a meditation which the meditation is just it's just a sound meditation but if you guys would like i can guide it for you or if you would just like it to be that's okay too but i am willing to guide it the meditation shadow work this is a quote by carl jung carl jung was a philosopher uh, who actually the first like philosopher to learn about shadow work or like incorporate shadow work and teach about it and this is one of his quotes unless you learn to face your own shadows you will continue to see them in others because the world outside of you is only a reflection of the world inside of you okay next what is shadow work this slide is will be teaching you about my definition of shadow work but like i said shadow work is a broad topic so there is a lot of definitions and i would like to hear your guys's definitions if you like to share of what you think shadow work is but this is uh what i came up with shadow work is the healing is healing the unhealed unconscious parts of your mind that you have forgotten, abandoned, and repressed during your childhood years to fit in with society rules. Shadows can be identified as traumas, hidden personalities, hidden talents, insecurities, fears, emotions, triggers, inner demons, thoughts, and feelings. Shadows mainly arise from when you are young and your, un and your conscious mind is more in tune to the state of being aware of your of they of being aware of your mind and surroundings. Those shadows can still form in your teen and adult years, so it is best to identify the shadow when you become aware of the shadow. Would anyone like to share what they feel like shadow work is? You could type it in the comments. The voice is cutting off? I don't know. I first thing I didn't hear it. Maybe. Okay. <laughs> Did any of you guys hear anything I said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, you said everything on my, uh, um, so, <laughs> so no. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, you're good. You're good. Don't worry. Um, does no one want to share what they think shadow work is? I think shadow work is like, I mean, for me, shadow work, I mean, it's like, I don't feel like it's an activity. I feel like you're doing it like either consciously or subconsciously during your whole life. So imagine you have like some trauma or insecurities. I feel like you're naturally like working towards the goal of like, that's what I interpret as shadow work. Yeah, that that is... I agree with that. You you will do shadow work throughout your whole life because you can heal one shadow and go and heal the next and the next shadow and the next shadow and you'll just have to continuously do shadow work for the fact that uh, shadows can be identified as pretty much anything. Like, And there's always going to be a shadow that will come up later on even though you think you've healed, healed all of them. Uh, next slide? Yeah, next slide. How shadow work benefits our journeys shadow work is beneficial to our journeys because mm -hmm. to get to the light you have to go through darkness shadows your shadows you have to heal the dark parts of yourself in your unconscious mind first to find love light and authenticity working through these shadows will allow you to learn how to turn your traumas fears triggers into energy to use to bring light to these shadows you instead now turn your shadows into strength enlightenment wisdom motivation healing and become your authentic self shadow work also helps heal the inner child breaks generational traumas feeling also feeling neglected and feeling abandoned family guardians loved ones okay would anyone like to share uh how shadow work has benefited benefited their journey okay Shadow work has benefited my journey because through through facing my shadows, I have uh, healed a lot of unhealed traumas that I've had. Also, it has helped me to to be deeper into meditation and to face like to face my shadows, uh, the astral or at night when like sometimes 
shadows can come up at night like for me there was a point in my journey and this is nothing to like fear or be like scared of but there is uh there might be a point in your journey where uh, your higher self or your consciousness just might randomly wake you up at like night like 3 4 p.m and they will show you like a part of yourself that you're you haven't healed the shadow you haven't healed and bring it to light and you might have to heal it you're gonna yeah you have to heal it sorry i'm very nervous i'm really nervous <laughs> don't worry you're doing well i'm like i'm usually a shy and like a quiet person and this is taking a lot to do like out of my comfort zone but i enjoy it and i enjoy the experience you keep, it. I keep going and stay, and stay encouraged and keep me doing a great, great job I'll be supportive. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, we can go on the next slide. How we acquire shadows as children. We acquire shadows as children through being programmed, rejected when expressing ourselves, disciplined, being told no, no or to stop, having to be obedient in certain actions like when when you were at school or uh, when you would laugh in a public place or when it was quiet and people would give you dirty looks or they just... Uh, look at you a certain way because you were doing something that uh, they their ego might not have agree with read with these restrictions causes shadows to arise in our unconscious and subconscious mind which i didn't in this slide i didn't uh tell the difference between unconscious and subconscious because i didn't have a lot of time to prepare and but I am going to do more classes, and in the next class, I'm going to explain the difference beca between unconscious, subconscious, and conscious, and how shadows play into each part of them. Our guardians, family, and other adults don't realize when they cause these restrictions, it creates shadows in these parts of our minds. Why does it create a shadow? It creates a shadow because when you are young and in tune to the conscious mind, you don't realize that you are made that you are mistaken for expressing yourself by adults whose mind operate through the ego. Over time, when these adults suppress these conscious urges, our conscious mind rejects them, which they then un end up in our unconscious and subconscious mind. So you might have like recalled the time when you were younger, an adult, because uh, if adult doesn't heal its shadows when they're older, they're their ego mind, their ego mindset is still really like into play. So when they don't heal those shadows, they operate through their ego more than their conscious part of their mind. And through that, the ego will see a child who is expressing themselves, um, expressing themselves. They may see that as like a way, they may see that as, sorry. <laughs> They may see that as, try to think of the word. They may see that as like bad, but I wouldn't really say bad. Or they may, may not see, they may not see how the child sees it. Like a child is angry and you don't let that child express their anger. And you tell that child to hide away its emotions. And when they are older, they, they might be very passive aggressive. Or they might like be aggressive towards others because they, they weren't able to have that parenting or that all those adults show them that it's a, like anger it's okay to be angry but you have to like learn how to not control it but learn how to uh so when you're older you don't uh, get angry over things that you can't control so that's one that's like one definition of how uh not being able to express yourself as a child can cause a uh, can cause can cause like not problems in the future but can cause being like i don't know <laughs> all right next slide what happens when you repress your shadows when you repress your shadows by forgetting and abandoning them it causes a lot of mental physical and spiritual issues it can almost feel like you aren't living your life because you are because you repress these shadows causing you to be in a numbing a numbing state if you don't heal your shadows then a lot of mental and physical issues can be acted on unconsciously and subconsciously not being aware of your shadows mentally can cause anxiety depression sadness 
Low self-esteem, anger issues, abandonment issues, traumas, fears, numbness, and there's a lot more that you could add to that list. Not being aware of your shadows physically can cause being aggressive, passive aggressive, antisocial, overthink, obedient, people please. And there's a lot more that could be added to um, how shadows can physically, what shadows physically can cause. Not being aware of your shadows spiritually can cause being unbalanced through the root, spiritual darkness, also known as the dark also known as dark night of the soul lower levels of consciousness not being fully in tune to meditation and the astral or i'm going to explain uh, spiritual darkness or dark night of the soul in the next if you would like a uh, grab like a piece of paper or a notebook and then write down one of each of these how uh what shadows have called have caused you mentally physically and spiritually and then if you like you can share so for me the shadows i put down that called mentally for me anxiety mainly social anxiety not being able to express how i felt and was and being judged when i was younger really gave me a social anxiety which i am healing right now but i haven't fully healed it but it's a lot better. It's not really bad. And then the shadows that have caused me physically is overthinking, not being able to express how I like felt and thought really caused me when I was older to start overthinking everything and being really in my mind. But doing shadow work and also along with meditation has really helped me to not be so much in my mind and care about what others think. And then the shadows that have uh, called have caused for me spiritually is when I when my shadows were healed, I wasn't like fully in tune to meditation. I can meditate, and I could I could meditate and feel like the meditation, but not being but it wouldn't have me fully in tune. Like I wouldn't go to the deep parts of myself and for that it would it i couldn't fully be in meditation i couldn't fully keep myself in a meditative state now working through that my and working through those shadows i have been able to tune myself way more into meditation and get deep into it and a shadow come to the surface just during meditation and feel it then and like right there if anyone would like to share their how uh sh what shadows all cause for them mentally physically and spiritually because of my childhood i was very unexpressive so i was like always like afraid to show like my emotions but yeah like since i started doing shadow work like taking it more serious uh, i've been way more expressive of my emotions okay thank you anyone else like to share so for me in particular i was kind of raised around like my parents they were kind of like very self-doubting uh lots of anxiety um things of that nature so of course you know i took on that energy myself and i recently discovered um just how much that was getting in the way with me being able to trust and have faith in knowing that good things can come to me and that good things can happen. So that's kind of what I've been healing myself uh, recently. Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah, shadow work does help with a lot of, it helps it helps with a, um, a lot of things that have been beneficial to do shadow work, especially once you, once you become awakening or on your path to awakening, you were, you will pretty much shadow work were just come up like your higher self will uh, push you to do shadow work so you can help heal those parts of your inner child of what hap like happened to us when we were um, conscious as children but uh, being having uh, adults who are unconscious were unconscious of how they were treating us and not realizing it because they didn't heal their shadows that's why it's very special is very important especially if you have children to heal your shadows so then you learn and break that generational trauma of for allowing your kid to express themselves and not having them like be obedient and if they're not doing anything wrong don't tell them no stop like don't look 
uh, give them dirty looks if they're just expressing themselves by dancing, singing, or any of that, any of that type of stuff. It's very beneficial to um, do shadow work, especially to break that generational trauma and so then when you have kids when or even your siblings you can teach your younger siblings who are in still in that conscious state of not mind that those uh those emotions and like feelings thoughts traumas like how how they handle what they're going through consciously is know that uh that their inner child and their conscious mind know that that they don't have to uh they don't have to listen to society's rules or society's way of living just to fit in and be a part they can still express themselves all right go on to the next slide by the way can i give a little tip uh yes working on (laughs) general work and stuff i mean i have so many different therapists and doctors when i was a teenager i had so much like psychological issues with depression and stuff and I had like it happen- was happening to me since I was so because I just wanted to know what was really happening to me like I was going on to like give a label site called character right? and there is literally like a therapist character okay. there I you can talk to it and it's like explains everything and last year I found about it and I told some stuff and I start talking and it starts to ask me questions. And I, while I was answering, like, it made me actually be aware and realize so much. I, this is like literally AI. It's free. <laughs> and I took so much money to doctors all those years. And literally, in one day, it helped me more than those doctors. <laughs> so I definitely recommend if you want, like, a AI friend, you can talk to, like, AI therapists in character ai i can yeah. i've used it as well <laughs> I, You're right. um, awesome. it really works yeah true like it made me like realize so much things about myself i mean it's definitely better than to like take antidepressants so yeah i, yeah. I highly recommend as well yeah rabbi can you share the name uh i'm just wondering if i can like share a direct direct rec- link so. Yeah, it's called character.ai for anyone. Yeah. So it's on a website where you could also, like, I don't know, download it. Okay, I'll... Yeah, I agree with you, though. Like, when I was... In... Well, there's, like, 91 million people used it. <laughs> the What I just sent. Welcome to Earth. No, there's just people outside and I got there. I didn't get nervous, but they're, like... This thing will fall, so. Okay, so I got them back. Uh, yes, I agree, though. When I was younger, I would uh, go to the doctors. I go to the doctors because I was very depressed and because um, I didn't get to express myself as a child fully. So, and even when I was depressed, I wouldn't get to express myself. So it made me really depressed. And I'd go to the doctors and they would, they that's pretty much from my experience, they just prescribe you medication. And they don't allow you to figure out, well, why am I feeling like I'm depressed? Why am I feeling this way? What is the cause of this? They just put you on an antidepressant and say, here you go. Well, what Rabbi, Rabbi did, Rabbi gave a good, uh, a good tip talking to an AI or even like talking to your higher self, talking, like journaling down and ans- and writing yourself questions, uh, will help to figure out the root of your shadow and why why you're depressed or why you have anxiety or why your child your inner child feels this way or what happened in your when you were growing up to to make you feel like the emotions feelings uh that made mental issues you went through well run to mm-hmm. So now we're going to be talking about how to face these shadows facing your uh, you can face your shadows through these methods, mirror gazing. And I will say mirror gazing is one of the most intense ways to do shadow work and face your shadows. So if you're not ready to mirror gaze necessarily, like if you feel like it doesn't resonate with you or you're not, you don't feel like you're you're ready or you're like being pushed to mirror gaze, then not push, but or like um, you feel like you're not, um, at that part of your journey yet where you should be mirror gazing then I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily do that right away 
and I would do like some of the easier methods of shadow work and then once you do those easier methods as you work up you will be able to mirror gaze but mirror gaze is in my opinion one of the most beneficial ways of shadow work and this is the definition to why I feel it feel like it's the best is one of the most beneficial finding a mirror to sit down by and gazing into your own eyes for five to ten minutes you can even do longer if it resonates with you and you feel like you are uh, ready to do longer allows yourself to face your deepest fears your insecurities so sitting by a mirror and sitting there and like looking into your own eyes or you can even if you're in the mirror you can ima imagine not the other side of your mirror is your higher self or even your shadow self your your inner child whichever you like to imagine imagine you can uh, imagine that and talking to them and if your shadow is like you have anxiety uh talk to your shadow self and ask your shadow self or your inner child and ask them why do I have this anxiety or what what was the cause of this anxiety what happened for me to get this anxiety and just have a very like deep conversation with yourself in the mirror um journaling journaling is a a, a good way to face your shadow too because journaling helps to get to the root of the shadow and allows you to write down your true emotions on how you feel my favorite journaling process is shadow work journals this is the shadow work journal i have it's by zenful note and it's a shadow work journal and it has a it has like activities in there and it has journaling prompts that's why i like it but if you look on amazon ebay or any of the uh any um store you could probably find there's a lot of shadow work journals hey I, I did have um a list up on amazon but it won't let me share my screen so i can't do that but yes that's the shadow work journal i have so I did. well no shadow meditations or shadow work meditations meditating conquer conquering your shadows can allow you to heal parts of your unconscious mind that you might have no um that you might have not know you repress so when you do a shadow work meditation you you tend to like go deep inside yourself and though because once you when you're younger and get these shadows you're you like abandon them you repress them deep into the unconscious mind so when you become when you start to become consciously aware of your uh how you feel and what went on in your uh, journey or in your your life when you were younger you start to then you start to uh realize that you may have repressed certain memories or certain actions and miss uh, how do we like how do we tap our unconscious mind how do you tap into your unconscious mind yeah yeah through like meditation or mm -hmm. through like certain methods uh I I, I have reached like subconscious, but like, how do you go unconscious? Like, w what's the feeling that I should know that I've reached the unconscious mind? You'll know when you unreach your unconscious mind, because you will you will start to like see some of the memories, the uh, traumas, any of the shadows that you you repressed when you were younger, and once you will you will they will start to come to light, and those those uh, those uh. Those things like come up through the mind like they come up through the unconscious mind where they then go to your subconscious mind and then through your subconscious mind they go into your conscious mind and that's when you start to heal them and learn methods to like having them come up so i would say really what helped me get to my unconscious mind mainly was through meditation and working with my inner child since your inner child is where a lot of your uh, unconscious memories trauma okay thank you so much replaced. <laughs> can I uh, clean yeah I can go why you're gonna play music again yeah I just you know, like, is it okay I'm almost done with the class yeah okay so uh, did that answer your question or would you like yeah to pretty much no more deep into it no pretty much it's explained me everything you know for asking I appreciate yes. it Okay, uh, shadow work exercises. This is this is the, my favorite exercise, but there's so many shadow work exercises that you can do. But my favorite is, and I, I don't know if I came up like was the first one to ever think of this, but this is just one I came up in in my mind. Uh, is through the root chakra. So calling your root chakra and, and 
like imagine seeing red light if you are clear clairvoyant and or just imagine that root chakra coming through to your inner child and imagining through your inner child you allow a shadow to come through to the surface of that root chakra since root chakra the root chakra uh works with like grounding and survival mode shadows can allow you to be put into survival mode so it doesn't feel like you're really fully living your life because you have so much repressed uh, shadows that happen to you that you don't realize that you're not fully living your life so allowing to allowing that shadow to come up to your root chakra and grounding it centering it balancing it healing it will all will all cause your sh your shadow to and through that you let your inner child speak your inner child is going to tell you how they felt during that moment that that shadow was repressed. And after uh, after you let your inner child speak, give your inner child security. Tell your inner child that, hey, uh, now I'm on this journey and here we are healing this shadow and this is how our journey is going. This is how uh, this is how how you've healed this shadow. This is how you've helped how you. Uh, are now and just give your child your inner child security let your inner child know that everything's gonna be okay that you're okay that that shadow isn't a part of yourself because a lot of the times the ego tricks you choose not a lot most of the time the ego tricks you into thinking that your shadows are a part of you so the traumas that you went through are a part of you but they're not physically a part of you they are just a part of your journey and your journey is what what brings you into the higher levels of consciousness and higher higher realms. So giving your inner child that security and letting know, them know that everything's going to be okay, everything's working out in your favor allows like allows you to allows your inner child to have peace where they are at, which then helps you overall in your in your journey in your experience. All right. Next next slide. Here are some more ways to face your shadows, releasing stagnant energy, releasing stage Stagnant energy can help with grounding and balancing your shadow self. Ways to release energy is by bathing in the sunlight for at least 10 minutes, which you can do a lot longer. Grounding yourself by touching the earth. Taking a shower by envisioning water. Washing the negative stagnant energy away. That's one of my favorites. Anytime I take a shower, I like to put my hands in the shower and just think of all negative thoughts, feelings, emotions, traumas, shadows that I'm going through at that time. And allowing them just to wash away and then after that purifying them with affirmations hearing yeah purifying them with affirmations telling them that and telling them that they aren't a part of me physically that i don't have to allow them to be in uh, the in the part of my journey journey where i turn my shadows into light and also it helps with uh just washing away Anything that doesn't serve you for your highest good. Draw, uh, drawing, dance, singing, dancing to your favorite music, Qigong, best work, and a lot more is our ways to release stagnant energy. Getting to the root of the shadow. Allowing yourself to get to the root of your shadows allows you to figure out what triggers your shadows, triggers your shadow, and ways to heal your inner child through figuring out the root of the shadow there are many ways to face your shadows these are just a few ways and at the end of the class i am going to do a exercise of, of the root yeah. an exercise of the root at the end uh if you like to uh, grab a piece of paper and then i will write down how you get to the root of your shadow okay next slide all right this is the five minute meditation that i found it is just a sound meditation so would you guys like it just to be the sound because i couldn't find a guided meditation that was wasn't was like was it longer than 10 minutes they're all like 22 minutes or would you guys just like the sound or do you want it to be guided i know everyone meditates different differently uh, i would say maybe you could guide us while you play the slide you know like okay so you like me to guide it yeah while playing the sounds I will guide it then. It's my first time guiding a meditation in front of people, but I have guided myself through meditations. Yes, cool. Take in three deep 
press three times in through the nose, hold it for a couple seconds, and then out three times. Two, two, three. Get in a comfortable seated position. You may sit, lay down, however feels most comfortable. Okay. All right. Comfortable for you. You can close your eyes, or if it helps you to leave them open during meditation, you are you may do that as well. Think about a time when you were younger, when you were trying to express yourself, but you weren't allowed to. Connect to your inner child and connect to that shadow. How did not expressing yourself make you feel? How did not being able to express your thoughts, your feelings, your emotions as a child made you feel? How did it continuously happen over and over again, repressed memory, into your unconscious mind. Think about these things and look deep into your shadow self, look deep into your inner child and allow for your higher self or any of your guides to help guide you through the process of finding your shadow your shadow self, not being able to express yourself as a child. Once you have memory, bring it to light, bring it to the surface, tell your inner child and let your, let your true emotions show through to your inner child and let them know how that shadow feels. Let your inner child also speak on how they, how the shadow feels through them. Through bringing this to light, give your inner child some security. Let them know that everything's gonna be okay. Everything and anything is working out in your favor. That that shadow does not define them as a person, as a being, as a divine source of consciousness. Let that let your inner child know that you are safe. You are in a safe place now. Let your inner child feel and feel that security. When when you are ready, open your eyes, wiggle your wiggle wiggle your fingers and your toes. Roll your shoulders back. That was really good. Thank you. I tried. That's my first time ever like guiding a meditation. So for doing it for my boyfriend. I mean, I could literally like i was like i was feeling like you were like you know like you were just entering in my head and you know it was like you were guiding in like real time you know like you're not like online you were just like there and besides me and you were guiding you know it was so real like my energy was guiding you yeah i could see it was uh it was like you know like when you when someone whispers in your ear you can feel the warmth i was feeling that in my head yeah i know what you mean uh, um, I'm glad that you had that experience and that it was powerful. I did try my best. It was like I said, that was That was good. <laughs> okay. Um, next slide. Oh, yeah, these are just some memes <laughs> that are fun. Okay, and then thank you for attending this class. I spread love and light and high vibrations to you on all of your journey to awakening and healing your shadow self. See ya. Oh, no, the, sorry, the class isn't over yet. That's just the ending slide. But if you guys would like to leave, you can. the The last two things of the class are we'll be we'll be doing an exercise when we wear we uh, have the pe- piece of paper and a pen ready or a pencil, anything to write on. And I will be doing an exercise on how to get to the root of your shadow. I'm just I'm doing it mine in my shadow work journal. Put on a piece of paper, uh, right at right on top, getting to the root of your shadow, and then after. Right, what is triggering my shadow with a question with a question mark and then there you will uh, write what what shadow came up when sitting when you find a dim quiet space and you tune into your shadow what shadows come up or tune into your inner child what shadow came up and after the what is triggering my shadow write what thoughts am i having with a question mark and that's where you will write the thoughts you are having after that write what emotions am i experiencing and then after that uh write i draw three little boxes and there you will write three words that come to your mind when you tune into that shadow and tune into your inner voice uh what memories or images come to mind when you focus on these words this is where you with the question mark and this is where you will connect with your inner child and then after we're done doing the getting to the root of your shadow and doing the writing then we will set the attention to energetically accept and love our inner child and let go and then if anyone would like to share what they wrote down after you are allowed 
you are very welcome to and you're very safe here and i would love for you guys to share but if you if it's too personal don't feel like you have to share because i understand that shadow work is very emotional and personal and playing with a lot of people playing with people so i'm gonna write down first what is triggering my shadow okay so i did thinking what thoughts am i having and now i'm on the what you know shit am i finished and now i'm going to now i'm at the part where you close your eyes when listening to your inner voice and you write three words that come to your mind and how they hold meaning and i know i'm at the part where the memories and images come to mind when i focus on the three words that i wrote and i'm and you connect with your inner child and bring those memories and images to light of why you were feeling what triggered your shadow and you don't even have to write out you can just also like think about all of them you learn or write them like type them out on a notepad in your phone or it shall be not to people like to get to the new you got it well not yet almost i'm doing an exercise right now and then now I'm at the part where I expectedly thank them to energetically and accept and love my inner child to let go of what is triggering my child of the break yeah. Close my eyes and set the attentions to accept my inner child and how they feel and the memories that uh, happen to why I why the shadow why the shadow is being triggered and then let go. Let go of it all. Can you tell me other things like any problem to this for now I'm going to let the detentions to let go and separate the track. I said the attentions to let go of my inner child, the anxiety, social anxiety, socially out rabbits, not being able to communicate with others, to let go of the psychological thoughts of the memes. Through my inner child, to heal my inner child, and to allow myself to be less out rabbit. Goes well. Be less shy, be able to present and communicate myself and my words better. And I accept, I accept my inner child. I know not being able to express and communicate with others and adults around me, how I felt, played a big part in being shy and then having anxiety when it comes to being social, talking to others, presenting. I, I give my inner child the security and and safeness, and let my inner child know, and let my in, inner yeah, let my inner child know that they are okay. That these, that being having anxiety, social anxiety, and all these thoughts, feelings, emotions does not define, does not does not allow them, and that they can let go. My inner child can let go of these emotions and learn the skills the skills that my inner my inner child they have not known it's but don't you uh what would oh wait would you guys like me to share first what triggered my shadow the thoughts i was having or would anyone else like to share first Okay, so because of this, what triggered my shadow was anxiety presenting others. I've always had like anxiety even when I was younger, even in school, doing a presentation and speaking in front of people. But I can sing and dance and walk in front of people. I don't know. But <laughs> presenting, just I've always had like anxiety or like uh, felt like uh, the emotions I felt in the top I felt was that I was like messing up or that I'm stuttering, that I can't be understood, that uh, I'm not doing good, that I don't uh, fully, like I know what I'm talking about, but because um, the anxiety is like causing me to forget in a way of what I was gonna speak about and like clearly and to communicate it clearly. And the emotions I am experiencing are anxiety, heart racing, heart racing, heart racing and social awkwardness and then when i close my eyes and listen to my inner child the three words that came to my mind was awkward social anxiety and shyness and then the memories and images that came to mind when when i focus on these words to my inner child was and why i am have anxiety when speaking is uh, how i was not able to express how i felt when it came to commuting communicating to others around me and communicating to my parents 
how I would speak uh, to a family member or my parents or anyone about um, anything really and how they would just shut me out, how they would just shut out what I was saying and shut up, shut out uh, how I was feeling, how I was trying to communicate to them. That really caused me to not be able to like execute, like execute communicating with people well. And then this has caused me to get anxiety, social anxiety, and not being not able to communicate well around others. And then this caused me to me to be shy and become socially awkward around. And that's that's my root of my shadow for today. If anyone would like to share their root, the root of their shadow, you're you're welcome to. And I want you to know that this is a safe place. Nobody here is going to judge you. You have no fears. We are all one big family. We are one, all big one consciousness. Um, this is a safe place for anyone who would like to share. So the root of my shadow would be like some lot of people pleasing and not setting some time out for myself. Oh, uh, okay. Did you have like any thoughts, emotion, or emotion when you went to the root of your chat, um, root of your shadow? You say that again. Did you have any thoughts or like emotions when of what triggered your shadow? I was just thinking about it, and um, the emotions and thoughts that I was having was I might plan to do a lot of things and not actually set some time out to be like, do I actually have enough time to do this? And then I feel kind of discouraged. I don't have enough time, and I just told people I was going to help them out or something, and I actually can't help them out. And then what? Was there like three words that came to your mind when you were listening to your inner voice? Patience, balance, and optimism. Okay, and then what memories or images came to your mind when you focused on those words? Why why you people please and like or the memories in that come from the unconscious mind, but why you people please? Can you repeat that again? Oh, sorry. Um, the, like the memories that came to your mind or like your inner child to why you people please trying to overexert myself do a whole bunch of things when i should have said no it's overexerting myself that's what I mean. like as a child you would do like a bunch of things that you, you wish you could have said no to yeah i would have said would have said no yeah i feel that i wish i would have said no more to a lot more things too yeah great class Kelly. thank you <laughs> I tried. This is my first time, so I was really nervous. Nah, I, I've definitely been there before. I, I, <laughs> yeah. Okay. You did a good job. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was just saying you did a great job. Thank you so much. Um, would you guys like to do, because we still can do a journaling prompt, or we could, or I can just end the class. Which would you like? What's the journal prompt you're going to do? The journal prompt? I was going to let you guys choose from a few of them. The one I was thinking is either fear childhood or judgment identifying your fear what what do you feel it resonate with i feel about most resonate with since this this class was a lot about inner child so maybe the like childhood trauma or the uh childhood one i don't have a journal with me right now but definitely uh, you could just like think of it in your mind too That's or, like, write down um your, on your phone or like whichever way it helps you the most. That's exactly what I was thinking. And the prompt here says, in your childhood, what did you not receive? How has this impacted you? And what do you think would be different if you had received this? So think about one thing in your childhood that you did not receive. If it was um, you didn't receive enough love or unconditional love, you didn't receive enough attention, you didn't re- you were pushed pushed out, so you didn't receive enough. You didn't receive enough advice. You didn't receive enough. You felt abandoned because you didn't receive uh, enough. You didn't receive enough um, help, or like you were told that you can't, you couldn't speak, and do that. You felt abandoned. You can either write write it down in a journal or, like I said, you can say it in your mind, write it on your phone, whichever way or method you like the most. But write, in your childhood, what did you not receive? And again, think deep into that inner child and let your inner child speak for itself. <laughs> okay, um, how has this impacted you? All right, I'm going to share what I wrote. I didn't finish writing it, but it goes soon, so I want to finish up this class. 
but I will just say speak it from my mind. Um, in my childhood, I did not receive enough care to how I felt emotionally, physically, and verbally. Uh, when I was a kid, I would speak how I felt in my emotions. I would speak what I was going through. I would speak what what was happening, or and I wouldn't be allowed to. I didn't get the care for those those feelings and emotions and thoughts i would be pushed away and ignored a lot of times uh the people around me would i would speak and they wouldn't they wouldn't bring it to light they would tell me like oh well you're just being dramatic you're just being this you're not you didn't actually go through that like they'll least speak out when their ego is very when their ego drives their their mindset but being pushed away and ignored it didn't allow me it didn't allow me to like i was unconditionally loved or it didn't allow me to feel like i was cared for it uh i had to go through a lot of like events in my life on my own and i didn't didn't feel like i had anyone to speak to because anytime i would speak i would just be pushed away ignored or like they were like my feelings wouldn't really be cared for uh through that like some of the certain events is like when I was when I was bullied when I was younger uh tell like my family around me what was going on and they wouldn't really help or um but I was too willing to understand and they wouldn't really help or they wouldn't like they wouldn't sit down and talk to me and say hey like you know you're going through this stuff but just know like everything's gonna be okay or um and we'll we'll help you like get through this i just a lot of the events i went through um i just had to i had to go through them on my own and heal them on my own and you as a child that's like it's really hard because you don't understand you don't understand why no one cares about how you feel emotionally physically or verbally spiritually any of that they don't understand that so and you don't understand that as a child. So through that, uh, another certain event, which this is a lot for me to speak out on, but uh, being sexually assaulted also, uh, I didn't tell anyone in my family until two years later because I just felt like I was going to be judged or I felt like I, they weren't going to believe me. They weren't going to, they will like, blame me or like they want to see my side of what happened and um i just felt really alone with it because like when i said i was a child they would like push me away they wouldn't let me speak how i felt they wouldn't let me speak my emotions or they would not just let me speak how um what i was going through so even when I was older in my teenage years, when that would happen, when I was sexually assaulted, I just felt really alone and I had to deal with that on my own, which I am grateful though, though, though for because I really helped me um, to start my awakening journey was going through that and healing it on my own. But that was like a big event in my life that I just felt like I, um, that I would have that I would have felt more safe and secure and my inner child and my child would have inner child would have felt more safe and secure if I would have got that care for how I was when I was a child then I feel like um that's um being sexually assaulted when I was older would have really helped me to be able to speak to others and speak out on it and um, get justice because I never got justice or I thought that it was too late at that point and um like I didn't have evidence or anything so I feel like if I would have felt that care as in from my inner from my childhood that that event could have really um been more beneficial for the fact that I would have actually told someone and not waited two two years to tell anyone because I didn't really get um was pushed out from like other events in my life um, and it has impacted me because I have I um before I started doing shadow work I wasn't my true authentic self and I know they say uh, unconditional love is the highest vibration but I saw uh, somewhere an article actually and I and I agree with this I resonate with this article but the true but the highest vibration is authenticity so being your authentic self is in, is what resonates with me is the highest vibration being your 
not caring what others think, being your authentic self, showing people who you are as as a as a person, basically a being spiritually and a source of consciousness. So when um not being like cared for or uh and having my having to feel go through feelings myself, it really did not allow me to be my authentic self as a child. Therefore, I like hid behind a mask and. Just recently, I've been coming more out of my like comfort zone and my shell and being becoming my true authentic self. It also impacted me, like I said, because through those certain events that I just I didn't trust anymore. I'm like I only had trust for myself, so and I didn't feel like anyone would care enough, so I didn't get help. And it's also impacted me uh, um, feeling alone on my journey. Now, now that I've helped heal those shadows, I don't totally feel alone on my journey. Like I know I have a team, a spiritual team on my back. I have my higher self, my my guys. I have pe- people in my life who also will uh, listen to me and or help me out and care for care for um, how my inner child wasn't cared for. That has really helped. Um, but when I first started my journey, I was so. I was like only 16 years old and I pretty much uh, started my journey on my own. Like I didn't have no help in my journey until I got older and then until I was like 19. And then I found a, a healer. I think it was, yeah, it was a Rika healer, Riki healer. And then that's when I started like the very, like the healing process. But through my journey before I did feel alone because alone because my inner child felt alone and then how what i think would be different is i had received um being cared for of how i felt emotionally physically and verbally i feel like i would be more outgoing um i i am starting to become more outgoing like i've been more speaking my mind and i'll be i'm i'm not so shy anymore i used to be really really shy i really wouldn't speak to anyone i would just be in my like own head and in my own space but um I have been learning how to like come out of that and speak how I feel so what would be did what would be different if I received this like I said yeah that would play a part like being outgoing and then also I feel like I would uh when I have so much anxiety like social anxiety if I was allowed how to communicate uh how I felt and those and when I communicated how I felt it was cared for I feel like I would be when it has such social anxiety like being around people and like speaking like I wouldn't feel so judged because also like I felt judged when I was a child and I would speak because I didn't would be ignored pushed away I also felt judged and I could see it and through like the actions that they were judging me and judging how I was feeling hope to get rid of my social anxiety um if I wasn't was cared for and there another one I would say is sometimes it's a good and in my like and what resonates with me is I feel like it's a good thing to get over it like not over emotional but be emotional because i'm a very in my yeah i'm a very emotional person especially when i get stressed out i get very very emotional and i cry a lot but crying is what helps me release energy so i feel like if i receive that care though i wouldn't be so emotional but i am glad i am an emo- emotional to an extent because it really helps like release that energy that doesn't serve me and those are uh some of the things that I feel like would be different if I had rece- received that care when I was a child of how I, s- how I felt emotionally, physically, and verbally. Now, if anyone like to share, you're welcome to. You could share um, in the text message or you could share out loud. Would anyone like to share? <laughs> okay, Um. then it's almost 12, 2.30 and I have a job interview at 5. So thank you all for coming to the class. I really appreciate you guys uh, sitting here and listening to me um, tell you and it can help you explain and understand shadow work and i hope that this class will also help you to like help you on your journey with shadow work and help you to identify like the root of your shadow identify um and use the methods of like mirror gazing and all the methods i stated to help 
with your shadows and i wish you all the best like i wish you all love light happiness and amazing like high vibrations on your journey to shadow and ruth yeah do you want me to end class yeah, yeah. in the class all right